Hello, my name's Isaiah, and in this video, we're going to talk about the RTX Video Cards and Boost 4.0. So what is Boost, and what is 4.0 to be exact? Well, I covered this in my previous video of Boost 3.0, and 4.0 basically is um, building on that foundation, so not much has changed. So let's go over what Boost is, and then talk about what has been added to Boost in the fourth iteration. At the core, Boost operates on three founding rules. You have voltage limit, you have temperature limit, and you have power draw, or power draw limit if you want to say that. This means when you are using a video card, like the NVIDIA 2000 series or 10 series, with these three rules in place, NVIDIA has allowed this uh, function called boost to operate. And boost can be kind of uh, thought of it as like turbo mode. So on a modern processor, you have turbo. On a video card, you have uh, a higher frequency, like a boost mode or a turbo mode. And that is basically what this is. But it goes one step further than what people are used to. Usually you think, okay, my core clock speed is 1500 megahertz and it will turbo up to 1800. Now that is normal for a video card. When you're buying one, you usually have like overclocking model and the extreme model and the ultra model and they all have different set frequencies. Now the way boost works is basically anything above the core speed is considered boosting. And how it does that is basically on three principles of power draw limit, voltage limit, and temperature limit. So if the video card is a low enough temperature, it'll boost higher. If the video card is not pulling too much power or power draw, then it'll boost higher. If the voltage is not reached, it'll draw more power or higher voltage, and then for the, the frequency increases. So with that in mind, those three kind of govern each other. There's always kind of a three power play there. If you want a higher clock speed, you need lower temperatures, but you also need higher voltage, which means it's higher power draw. So you have to have all three combined together and that's what you get. So this is when boost comes into effect. When you're using boost, your video card will go up and down frequency based on those three parameters. Most often people do not know boost is operating in the background because it's built into, into every card is baked into it and you can't turn the feature off, which is good and bad. Good because the average person doesn't want, doesn't care, or doesn't need to know about it because it's doing what it should do. It's keeping the video card in a safe operating temperature while giving you the maximum performance. Now, if you're overclocking, manual overclocking, you want to really just squeeze everything out of your card you possibly can, then that's when it comes a problem. So as you see, when running a benchmark or a, your game, so temperature increases, frequency lowers, as your power draw increases, the voltage increases, and there is a limit. So boost, at least for the Founders Edition cards, 124% is the maximum power draw, which kind of limits how much voltage you can be taken, and then therefore limits how much frequency is allowed as far as over the base limit. So as long as you can keep those three into consideration, that is the fundamentals of boost. Like I said, as your voltage increases, your heat increases, therefore your clocks lower. As your voltage increases, your power draw increases, and then you hit a limit there, and then your clock speed can't go higher because the voltage limit has been hit. So what makes Boost 4.0 different than 3.0? Well, the major difference is NVIDIA has included a auto OC scanner. This scanner was in EVGA cards for the 10 series. It was kind of a feature they made themselves. And so in the, this newest generation, NVIDIA has taken that idea and baked it into every car there is. So if you were to overclock, you don't have to do it by manual anymore. You can have the video card do it for you, with, of course, with some software, but it's more of a hands-off approach. Uh, this is also good, and it's definitely a step in the right direction, but you still are limited by the same factors of uh, the voltage, power, and temperature, and you can't get around that. So you can only go so far with auto overclocking. And then the second thing is kind of the curve when it comes to uh, the video card. So before in the last series, when it hit a certain temperature, which was too high, the frequency would automatically drop, say 100 megahertz or 200 megahertz to compensate that. This new generation, the video card will curve its way down slowly instead of just drastically step by step by step. It was kind of like, st it was before it was kind of like stairs, you're walking upstairs, you're walking downstairs. Now it's kind of like a, a smooth incline. You don't have to worry about drastically having lower clock speeds because your temperature has risen. So that concludes Boost 4.0 and wraps it up pretty neatly. It's not very uh, 
hard topic to understand, but it's very lengthy if you want to apply the application to that. Now, part one of the overclocking guide is for beginners and intermediate users. Part two of overclocking guide is for advanced users. In the advanced section, I'll be talking about the custom curve and how that can be applied to your video card. And for the beginners section, I'll be talking about the auto overclocking scanner and how that might be best for you.